Hi and welcome to this video. In this video I will be giving you a complete beginner's guide to Facebook ads in 2023. This video will be value packed from start to finish so if you do enjoy it make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe for more videos regarding Facebook ads in 2023. I'm going to be giving out so much value about Facebook ads on this channel so you definitely want to stay subscribed. But with that being said let's jump right into the video. What we're going to cover in this video is going to be number one, Facebook ads foundations. Number two, campaign mastery. This is where we are going to take the first step and actually set up the settings for your overall campaign. Number three, audience mastery. This is where we set the targeting, where we pick the placements that you're going to use on the platforms and so on. Lastly, we have number four, ad creation mastery. This is basically where I show you exactly how to create your ads and I give you some tips and tricks on how to make them better. So with that being said, let's jump right into number one, Facebook ads foundations. So firstly, you want to go to business.facebook.com. Once there, you can either log in with your Facebook profile or you can create a new account. Now, obviously I have already set all of this up, so I'm not gonna go through the steps in this video, but it's very simple. Just follow the steps and give Facebook the information that it needs to create your meta business suite. If you have a business email, use that instead of your personal email and so on. Now, once you have gone through those steps, you should land on this page where it says Meta Business Suite. This is basically the Meta Business Suite. This is where all of your business assets are stored. So if you jump back into the PowerPoint here, you can see that the Meta Business Suite is basically above all. This is where all of your business assets are stored. Underneath that, we have the Ads Manager. This is basically where all of your ad accounts are stored. Underneath that, we have your ad accounts. This is the interface where you optimize and create your campaigns, ad sets, and ads. Underneath that, we have our campaigns. This is basically where you pick your campaign objective. And then we have underneath campaigns, we have ad sets. This is where you set your targeting. And lastly, we have ads. This is basically where you create your ads. With that overview out of the way, let's jump back into the Meta Business Suite and set it up. We are now back in the Meta Business Suite. And what you want to do to navigate to the Facebook Business Manager is that you want to go to Settings. Once there, you can see you have a lot of different options right here. You want to go to Business Settings. We're now here in business settings. This is formerly known as the Facebook business manager. This is where you can manage all of your business assets within Facebook. So let's just go through them one by one. I know there's a lot of options, but do not get overwhelmed. Just follow along for now and I'll show you exactly what you need to know in here. So firstly, we have users. If you just toggle this down, you can see that we have people, partners and system users. Here on the people, you want to add yourself, so your own personal Facebook account, you want to add it here by clicking the add button. If you have partners, let's say you are a marketing agency and you want to help businesses with Facebook advertising, then you can add them on the partner just by clicking add as well. So with that out of the way, let's jump down to accounts. So this is where you add your Facebook page. If you haven't created a Facebook page from here, you can also create a new one and you can pretty much add it so that it's under your Facebook business manager. If you jump down to ad accounts, here you can create an ad, ad account. Uh, I can't do it because my ad account creation limit is uh, only one, but here you can create an ad account if you haven't done so already. If you jump further down, you can add your Instagram as well. I haven't added an Instagram to this account. It is a test account, so I didn't want to create an Instagram just to add it to this. I only created a Facebook page, but in here you can also add an Instagram account and you of course need that if you want to advertise on Instagram as well. So it's a great idea to do. If we go down to data sources, here you can add your catalog and your pixel. Now I'm not going to go in depth with how you create a catalog and create a pixel, but you can definitely go to YouTube and search for that. Just make sure that if, let's say you have built your website in Shopify, make sure that you find a tutorial specifically for Shopify, or let's say you have built it in WordPress, make sure that you find a tutorial specifically for that, or any other platform, just make sure that it is catered to that platform because that will make it a lot easier for you. Once you have done that and set all of that good stuff uh, up, you can add access in here. We can go to brand safety. This is where you have your domains. Again, here you need to verify your domain uh, add your domain and verify it. I'm not going to go in depth and give you a tutorial on that as well in this video, but again, you can easily search for that. It only takes around five minutes. It's very easy to set up. So go ahead and search that in and, uh, and get that uh, fixed. 
Here you need to add a lot of information about your business. So legal business name, address, business phone number, website, tax ID, and so on. You can also verify your business in here. So Facebook know that your business is legitimate. And all the way down here, you can actually also see how many ad accounts you cre can create. And as I said earlier in this video, my ad account creation limit is one at the moment. And all the way down at the bottom, you can also add two-factor authentication if you want. That's a great idea to keep your account safe. So after you have added all of the different assets to the Facebook Business Manager, what you want to do is that you want to go up under yourself, your personal Facebook profile, and you want to add the assets right here. So let's say I were to remove my ad account so I didn't have access to the ad account anymore then I wouldn't be able to go into that account because now I don't have access. What I need to do in order to access it is that I want to click add asset. So add asset to my personal profile. Then I want to go underneath the relevant tab. So it's going to be add accounts. And then I want to pick the ad account and then I want to turn this on so that I have full control so I can manage the ad account. Now I don't have a catalog or pixel um, created, but if you had, you could do the same thing here and the same thing here so that you can manage and control that. So click save changes. And then as you can see, now I can control the ad account again. So that's basically it. Let's jump right into the ads manager. Firstly, let me show you exactly how you navigate to it. So you go up to all tools right here, click on that. And then the ads manager should be in shortcuts. If it's not, it's going to be underneath here. Now the shortcuts is going to be the options that you use the most. So if it is a new account, the ads manager should be right here. Now that we are in the ads manager, I know that there's a lot of options. Again, just follow along. Don't let all of these options overwhelm you. I'm going to show you exactly what you need and the most important things to know. Uh, as a beginner in the Facebook Ads Manager. So basically the first thing you want to do is to set up your custom columns. So go to columns right here, press custom columns or customize columns. Once here, remove all of these that are pre-selected. Once those all are removed, let's take a look at what columns we want to customize and set up. This tutorial is catered towards e-commerce stores. So we are going to set up custom columns for an e-commerce store. Now, if you are running a lead business, then the columns will look slightly different. Just keep that in mind. But basically what we need to set up is all of these columns. Now I'm going to go through them one by one so you know exactly what they mean. Some of them are pretty self-explaining to you, but I'm going to go through them regardless. Let's go through them one by one. Amount spent is basically the amount that you have spent on Facebook advertising. Reach is the reach of your Facebook ads. So how many people have your Facebook ads reached? Impressions is the how many impressions have your Facebook ads made? Frequency is basically just telling you exactly how many times on average people have seen your ad. So if you have a frequency of five, that means that people on average have watched your ads five times. Outbound clicks, how many clicks have gone from Facebook and to your website. CTR, that stands for click-through rate. That means how many people have seen your ad and actually click onto the website. So let's say you have a CTR of 3%. That means that every time 100 people sees your ad, then three uh, clicks onto your website. Next up, we have CPC, that is cost per click. That is pretty self-explaining to you. How much are you paying per click? CPM, cost per mil. That is basically another, mil is another word for thousand. So cost per thousand impressions. So how much are you paying per thousand impressions? Add to carts, basically how many add to carts has there been on your website? Cost per add to cart, how much are you paying per add to cart? Takeouts initiated, how many takeouts initiated has there been on your website? And how much are you paying per checkout initiated? Purchases, how many purchases have your ads generated? Conversion value, what are the value in, yeah, what are the purchase value of those purchases? And also cost per purchase, how much are you paying per purchase? Lastly, we have ROAS, return on ad spend. That means how many times have you made your money back with advertising? So the way you calculate this one is by taking the conversion value and dividing it by amount spent. So let's say you had have, you have generated $800 in conversion value from selling products. 
and you have spent $100, then you would have a worse 8 because 800 divided by 100 is 8. So we are back here in the Facebook Ads Manager. So let's set all of these columns up. Just follow along. Amount spent is the first one. Then we have reach. Now I'm trying to remember all of them in the correct order. Then we have impressions, frequency. Then we have outbound clicks. Then we have CTR and you want to pick this one. Then we have CPC. And then we have CPM. Cost per thousand impressions. Then we have add to cart. And here you want to click total, pick the total add to carts we have had and the cost per add to cart as well. Then we have checkouts initiated. And again, you want to pick the total checkout initiated and the cost per checkout initiated. Then you want to type in purchase and that's going to be the last thing we type in. And you want to pick the total amount of purchases. So yeah, the total amount of purchases, the value, the conversion value of these purchases and the cost per purchase as well. And on top of that, you want to pick ROAS, so return on ad spend. Now, what is very important now is that you click all of these off so that we get one tweet number. I forgot that one. So that it doesn't divide it on different subcategories. Once that's done, you do not click apply. You go over to save as preset and you can call it whatever you like. I'm just going to call it e-commerce hashtag one. And then we're going to press apply. Once that's done, what you want to do is that you want to go to columns again and you want to um, press set as default. That way it's set as default once you enter the ads manager. That is where we need. So as you can see now, we have set up all of the columns right here so that we can track the information, uh, track all of the data we want uh, once we start running our ads. Now we're pretty much good to go. So let's jump into how to actually create a campaign. Number two, campaign mastery. So that's basically six campaign objectives that you can pick between in the Facebook Ads Manager. Here it's very important that you don't try to outsmart the Facebook algorithm. Facebook is extremely efficient at giving you exactly what you want. So let's say you ask for sales, then Facebook will give you sales. So don't think that if you pick traffic that you will get a lot of sales because you will not. Because what Facebook does is that it will, let's say you pick traffic and you think like, hey, if I get a lot of traffic to my website, then a lot of them probably convert into sales as well. But what happens is that if you pick sales, then Facebook will go ahead and find people that are likely to click on your ad and just load your website and then not do anything else. So you get a lot of traffic, but these people are not going to buy. If you pick sales, then Facebook will find people that are likely to see your ad, click on it and go to your website and actually purchase. So as I said, don't try to outsmart the Facebook algorithm. Tell Facebook exactly what you want and Facebook is very efficient at giving you that. That is basically how Facebook are making their money uh, by keeping their advertisers happy and satisfied. In this video, I will be talking about how you create a sales campaign because that is the most relevant for e-commerce stores. Now, if you're running a business that requires that you generate leads, you can also run a lead campaign. I will be making a video regarding that in the future. So make sure to subscribe to the channel so that you can stay updated on all of those videos. But yeah, in this video, I will be showing you exactly how to set up a sales campaign because as an e-commerce store, that is what you're going to use 95% of the time. So let's jump back into the ads manager and let's set it up. We are now back here in the ads manager. And what you want to do is that you want to go to the green button right here and press create. Once here, you're going to get some pop-ups right here. I'm just going to close them down. But you can see all of the six uh, campaign objectives that you have available. As I said, we're going to set up a sales campaign because we want to generate sales for our e-commerce store. Click that and press continue. Firstly, you can give your campaign a name. Now, I'm not going to go into depth about naming conventions, but it is very important to have a great structure in the Facebook Ads Manager. So when, once you have a lot of campaigns running, a lot of assets, a lot of ads running, you can navigate them nice and easily and you don't waste a lot of time because you can't find a specific ad that you want to optimize. So I'm pretty much just going to call this tendency and then I'm going to call it TF for top funnel. We're going to talk more about that later in this video. 
Then I'm going to name it the, the campaign objective, so sales. And then I'm going to name it the CBO because we are going to run campaign budget optimization in this specific campaign. Again, I'll talk about that here in a bit. So after you have given your campaign a name, the next thing would be special ad categories. Now, if you have an e-commerce store, this is not relevant for you, most likely not relevant for you. I cannot say 100%, but 99% of the time it's not relevant for you because you only need to click one of these options if your ads are related to credit, employment, or housing, or about social issues, elections, or politics. So if your ads are not related to that, you don't need to worry about that, you can just skip it. After that, we have campaign details. So basically buying type. Now that's only one option available and that's auction. So we cannot change that. And that is also the one we want. Underneath here, we have campaign objective. And as you know, we have already picked that, but let's say you were to create a traffic campaign and that was a mistake. You wanted to create a sales campaign, then you can change it underneath here, even though you have created the campaign. Now let's skip these options because they're not relevant for us and go all the way down to advantage campaign budget. Now, this is a new name that Facebook have given CBO or campaign budget optimization. What this basically means is just that Facebook will optimize your budget on a campaign level. It is a great idea as a beginner to use because then you give more of the responsibility over to Facebook so that you can focus more of your energy on some other parts of the ad. So we are going to pick that and we are going to set up budget right here. You can also pick between daily and lifetime budget right here gonna close that one and then underneath here there's a lot of different options that you can pick we are going to go with highest volume but I just wanted to let you know that there's a lot of different options right here now one of them is not available for us right now that doesn't matter because we are just going to go with highest volume with highest volume we get the most results for our budget which is exactly what we want now that was all we needed to set up at the campaign level let's jump on and press next so that we get to the asset level Number three, audience mastery. So basically there's three types of audiences. We have our core audiences, lookalike audiences, and custom audiences. Core audiences is based on data that Facebook already have, and that is available to all advertisers. Now lookalike audiences and custom audiences are based on data that is specific to your business. So mainly in the beginning, core audiences is what you need to focus on as a beginner because you don't have that much data to work with. But over time, as you run your core audiences, you will get more and more data and you can use that to build your lookalike audiences and your custom audiences. I will not go in depth about how to create lookalike audiences and custom audiences in this video. I just thought it was nice as a beginner to know that they exist and that you can use them later down the road. In this video, I'm going to go through how you can set up a core audience. I'm going to set up a very broad audience and show you exactly how it's done and the different types of core audiences that you can set up. But before we set that up, I want to explain the sales funnel for you because it's very important when we talk about audiences so we understand exactly when we need to use which audience. So the sales funnel looks something like this. So we have the top of the funnel. These are customers that are very new to the brand. Maybe they don't even know about your brand or if they are around here, they're very new to your brand. They have maybe watched one or two ads. They are very new to the brand. Bottom funnel is people that know about your brand and are a lot closer to purchasing. So basically you can see it as this. At the top of the funnel, you have about 100,000 customers. Here you have about 10,000 customers. And the further we get down, of course, the more people are going to fall off. And at the bottom, we are going to have all of our purchases, which is going to be a number that's significantly lower than here at the top of the funnel. So at the top of the funnel, we are going to have our core audiences and our lookalike audiences. As I said, that is people that are very new to the business and don't really know about the business. And at the bottom of the funnel, we have our custom audiences. So in order to target the people at the bottom of the funnel, we need to create some kind of custom audience so that we can target them. With that being said, let's jump right into the ads manager and let me show you exactly how you set up a core audience. So we are now back here in the ads manager and we want to give our ad set a name. I'm just going to call it broad for the sake of this video. After you have given your ad set a name and it's a great idea to name it after exactly what you pick throughout the ad set, but don't worry too much about it in the beginning. Just give it a name that you can remember. After that, you're going to go under conversion and you're going to pick your conversion location. You can pick between a few options. You're most likely going to pick website, but you can also pick app website and app and messaging apps. We're going to go with website 
because we have an e-commerce store with a website and we want to increase the online sales on there. On the performance goal, you can pick between a few options. You have a lot of other goals right here. You're going to go with maximize number of conversions. Next up, we have Pixel. Now, as I said, this is a test account, so I haven't set up a Pixel, but underneath here, you can basically uh, pick your Pixel and pick exactly what you want to optimize for. And what you want to pick underneath there is purchase. So you want to optimize your campaign for purchases. So after that's done, you can go underneath this one. Once you click that down, you can change your attribution settings. We don't want to tamper with this, especially because this is a beginner's guide. But once you get a little bit more advanced, you can definitely look into this as well. But we are going to go with seven days after clicking or one day after viewing. Next up, we're going to go under budget and schedule. Here you can change the start date for your ad. Now we are not going to change it, but let's say you wanted to start your campaign at a Friday and you wanted to run it all the way to Sunday at midnight, then you could basically set it up here. So you could set the start date to Friday and the end date to Sunday midnight. So that is pretty neat in some scenarios, but we are not going to use it in this video. If you press down this show more options, you can set an ad spend limit. Now we're not going to do that, but it's pretty neat if you need to set a limit to how much you actually are spending on ads and you don't want to go above that, you can always control that underneath there. Next up, we have audience. Here we can set up our audience. Now, if you had a pre-saved audience, which you can create in the audience manager, you could pick it right here, but we are going to create a new one. Here you can also search for audiences. So as I talked about earlier, if you had a lookalike audience or custom audience, you can search for it here. Most likely because you are starting out, you don't have the data to create those. So they're not going to be useful in this video. And we are just going to create a core audience from scratch. So underneath here, you can pick between a few options. Now the most relevant for you would be people living in this location, but you can also go with people uh, living in or recently in this location. And you can even target people that are traveling in a certain location. We're going to go with people living in this location and I'm going to change this to the United States. Now I'm going to go ahead and hide the map right here. Once that's done, we can pick the age range. Now I'm not going to change it, but you could change it if you would like to. So we are going to keep it at 18 to 65 plus. Underneath here, you can change the gender. We are just going to keep it at all. Next up, we have detailed targeting. Here you can add demographics, interests, or behaviors. You pretty much just click browse, and then you can see all of the different options underneath here, and you can pick the one you want. Now, best practice is to only pick one at a time and test it out one at a time. And what I would also just recommend overall is that you use your gut feeling to pick an interest because it's very hard to know what works. So you have to test it out. So just go with your gut feeling and, and choose that. And yeah, oftentimes you have a great idea of what could work. What actually also sometimes works very well, especially after the iOS 14 update, is just going without any demographics, interests or behaviors because just a broad audience as we're setting up right now is actually performing pretty well oftentimes but sometimes it doesn't perform that well if the ad account is new. So you want to be careful, careful here. And uh, yeah, normally if you have a lot of data, it can work well. And when you don't have that, it can be kind of a gray area. So you want to be careful, but always just test it out. Next up, we have advantage detail targeting. This is pretty much an option that you can use to broaden your audience. So let's say now we have a very large audience size right here, but let's say the audience size was 200,000 then we could click this on and it would broaden out the audience. Now, because this is a broad audience, we have all people within the audience. So clicking this will not change the size, but let's say, as I said, it was smaller. This would help you to reach more people so that Facebook could go out and find people, even though they are outside your detailed targeting to improve the performance. So um, this is sometimes great to put on. Normally I'll leave it off. So we are going to leave it off uh, for this video. Next up, we have languages. We don't want to change anything about that. We just want to go with all languages. And last up, we have placements. So here you can pick between Advantage Plus placements, which pretty much just are automatic placements, or you can pick manual placements. We're going to go with Advantage Plus, so automatic placements. But if you were to change the placement, you pretty much just pick manual placements, and then you can pick the placement you want but I would recommend, especially as a beginner, that you go with automatic placements. That is pretty much all we need to set up here on the ad set level. Let's click next so we get to ad creation. 
Number four, ad creation mastery. So here we are pretty much going to create the winner ad. So just follow along once again, and I will show you exactly how it's done in the ads manager. I'm now here in the ads manager and let's set up the final step here. Let's create your ad so we can get this campaign up and running. So you want to firstly name the ad. We are going to call it photo number one. And we are going to call it copy number one because this is the first photo in this campaign. It's, and it's going to be the first copy in this campaign as well. What I normally do then is that after that I put the link. So let's say you have a normal page where you have all of your products. Then you would call it normal and one for page one on that normal page. So normally when you have a lot of products, there's maybe 20 pages. So to know exactly which page that you are sending the traffic to, just put the number uh, after that. Let's say you were running a clothing store and you wanted to send traffic uh, to your shoe page. Then you could so call it shoe number one for shoe page number one. You can also just write shoe page number one, but I just like to keep it short, especially with the link. After that, we want to go down on the identity and I've picked my Facebook page right here. I haven't connected an Instagram account, but underneath here, you can also pick your Instagram account. If you haven't connected one, you can also connect it directly through here by pressing connect account. Now that is the reason for this red pop-up, so just ignore that. Next up, we have ad setup. Here we are going to select create an ad. You can also use existing posts or use creative hub mockup, but we are going to create an ad. Then under creative source, we are going to manually upload. Uh, in this case, it's going to be an image, but it's the same whether it's an image or a video. So we're going to manually upload that. And then for format, we're going to pick a single image or video. You can also pick carousel or collection. And then we are going to turn off this option right here. Next up, we have add creative. Here you can add a media. We are going to add an image. So I've already pre-uploaded two images, one for the Facebook and Instagram feed and one for story. Now, what you basically just do is that you press upload and then you find the image or images on your computer and then you upload them. Now, once that's done, you just start by taking the Facebook feed image, the one by one image. Once you're here, you can replace these two if you want to. Now, the right column isn't that important, so normally I don't replace that, but sometimes it's a great idea to replace the story so that it's the right format, so that it's a nine by 16. You can also automatically crop it right here, but oftentimes it doesn't look that well. So I'm going to replace it. As I said, I've already uploaded the story format right here. Now you can see that it fits perfectly, and I'm going to press next. Now I'm not using these optimizations, so I'm just going to not let Facebook allow to make my photo brighter and so on, because sometimes Facebook just messes the photo up. So you just want to make sure that your photo is on point when you upload it to Facebook. Press done once you're done. And then as you can see, we're running on all the different placements and it basically pops up as it should and it looks great. You can just check it out here. You can check st the story format. And you can check, yeah, basically everything here. So after you have added your media, it's time to create your copy. Now a great thing to include in your copy, I'm not going to write out a complete copy in this video, but in the start of your copy, it's great to have an attention grabber. So basically what that could be, it could be a question or a bold statement. The reason why it's great to include that is because Facebook and Instagram is all about scrolling. So you need something in the start of your ad to really capture people's attention. And at the bottom of your copy, it's a great idea to include a call to action link so that it's very easy for your customers to click onto your website and actually purchase. So just keep that in mind when, when you're creating your copy. So I'm just going to write your copy goes here. So you can see exactly where it shows up. So it shows up on the Facebook feed. It shows up above here, but you can click around all the different placements to show exactly how it shows up on the different placements. For headline, next up, of course, we want to add a he headline. Again, try to make your headline very catchy so that you catch people's attention. So I'm just going to write your headline goes here. So you can see where it goes. It goes just underneath here. Now, I'm not sure why, but uh, it doesn't show, but it goes right here underneath your link. And then lastly, you want to add your description. So here it's great to uh, include, let's say you are running a sale 
and it ends at a specific time, you can include it in here. I'm just going to write your description goes here. Now it goes just underneath your headline and it doesn't show right here, but I believe you did see it uh, shortly, but uh, you can also just play around with this yourself. After that's done, you can change your call to action right here. We are going to go with shop now. Once you have created your copy, your headline and your description and added the call to action that you like, then it's time to insert the link that you want to send the traffic to. So we're just going to go with my website. Here you can also get a free uh, ebook on Facebook advertising if you're interested in that. So lastly, you want to go all the way to the bottom where it says tracking and here you can set up the Facebook pixel so that it tracks as it should. I haven't set up, as I said, a Facebook pixel for this account, but you just pick the right pixel on the web events. Now, if I press setup right here, I need to put in the pixel name. And as I said, I haven't set that up, but basically here you pick a pixel and set up the tracking for the ad. So make sure to do that as well. After that's done, you want to click publish and then you're pretty much good to go. Your ad is going to be sent in to Facebook for review. And once Facebook have reviewed it and they have confirmed that it is compliant with all their policies and rules regarding advertising on their platforms, then it will be good to go and it will go live on the platform and you can start seeing results. Pretty much all for this video. I hope you did enjoy it. If you did, make sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel for more videos regarding Facebook ads in 2023. I really did enjoy making it. So I hope you enjoy it. Have an amazing day and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.